Good morning, everyone. Uh, can I please have a quick sound check before we begin? Can you please type a one in the chat box if you can hear me? And also if you could see the share screen. Awesome. We're going to start a little early today. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Trading Room. My name is Anka Metcalf, and today is Friday, everyone. It is November 5th, 2021, 8.58 a.m. Eastern. And I will be off the mic for about 10 to 15 minutes in probably 10 minutes or so right ahead of the open. So we're going to do the pre-market game plan early. Uh, all right. So, wow, we have runaway price. Let's start with the economic releases. At 8.30, we have the we had the average hourly earnings, the non-farm employment change, and the unemployment rate. So we're pretty much done for today. Last two pieces are going to come in at 3 o'clock with consumer credit and treasury currency report. And this is all for the trading day today. So we're going to pretty much steer free and clear for the rest of the trading session. So what have we had in the overnight trading session, well, the price had the, the, the definitely we have runaway price. So the price is super extended. We don't have a trade right off the open today because the price is so elevated, it's not providing us an entry opportunity. With I mean, the risk is going to be so disproportionate to the uh to the return to the reward. So we had runaway price for the uh, for the last one, two, three, four, five hours. We have been moving higher. One, two, three, four, five higher in the uh, mini &E SP. And in NASDAQ, we had one, two up and then pull back. So NASDAQ may be the next one that may be setting up. So if we go on hourly rotation, on an hourly rotation here, and by the way, we still had uh, plenty of earnings that, you know, uh, plenty of reports that came out this morning. Uh, but we're looking at this hourly rotation. Uh, if this should happen, so if the price should trade 16,398, the price may extend higher into the all time high into the 423 and perhaps even higher into the next resistance that we have into the 433. Uh, we have runaway price, like I said, into the m and &E SMP. So unless m and &E SMP pulls back at least into the 4680 or 85 area, we're not going to have a trade in SMP. The Dow reacted super violently to the upside. Nice push to the upside after the massive range breakout that happened in the overnight trading session. We did have a bullish above level that triggered in the overnight trading session. And in fact, here I had a webinar last night. For those of you that were in the webinar, uh, we talked about this candle in the mini SMP. So I noted here and I said, if we are going to trade above the four hour candle that is going to set at, uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be bullish. Take a look at this massive breakout that happened here. So the price broke from 46.78. And it went and um, actually made a new all time high into the 4697. So, really nice push to the upside. You could see 77 to 97, right? So, 20 points straight up. This is what I call velocity, it's just instant gratification right here. And then again, we have Russell. Last but not least, we're going to take you a little bit to the four hour where we have the same type of trade. So, the four hour high. Blast off. We had an all time high resistance uh, into the 2224 area. It had it actually the velocity carried it higher into the 2434 area. We still have room for higher, believe it or not. We are running into extension. I'm a little bit concerned about the Dow because the Dow is trading right now into resistance. And uh, we talked yesterday about the levels and about the extensions and 36,100 is the max extension for it. So it surpassed the extension. Now we're going to see if the extension, the 36,100 level or below the 36,100 level into the prior high will be the next support area. So if we should have this uh, pullback into the 36,100 all the way to 36, let's say 36,060, this may be another like an opportunity and the market may be ready to continue a little bit higher. Now, the mini SMP, uh, you guys know that we talked yesterday again about the trading levels 2728. Um, I'm sorry, 4728 is the next extension. So it does have room for higher. You could see that it had approached the whole number at uh, 4,700, three points away from that. If we manage to take out this high, we may have uh, another leg to the upside. 
Also, if we get a pullback, the pullback is going to be into 84 or 80. And if this pullback is going to happen, this is going to be the next rotation point that we can act on. But as of right now, we have runaway price, so we cannot act on it. So I'm going to take it back to the one hour, and then we're going to shift back to smaller timeframes as we're heading into the open. You can see that Russell has begun a little bit to pull back right here. So it reached the resistance that it had from yesterday's New York trading session. Uh, it popped up a little bit, and then it's in to a pullback phase. Again, very extended. You see where the bullish above area is. Everything traded in the overnight trading session. And in fact, NASDAQ as well, because we did the analysis on NASDAQ in last night's webinar. And I did mention that if NASDAQ is going to trade above the four hour candle high, it will move higher. And the next target may be into the 400 to 420. Bingo, right on the money once again. So here it is, 16,423 for the high into resistance. Do we have room for higher? 16,500 for NASDAQ. And NASDAQ is trading into velocity in a huge tradable void and extension that, that levels are coming from a monthly chart. So really, 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 really uh, extended to the upside. All right, let's talk a little bit about gold and oil like i said gold and oil are trades that are setting up on a higher time frame and not on a smaller time frame if you try to trade them on a smaller time frame and it's up to you but you have tons of chances of stopping out because the odds on the smaller time frames for gold are really slim about 20 to 30 percent so 70 to 80 percent chances of stopping out of the trade we do have two levels. We have the 18, uh, 1805 and the 1812 that are going to be first one is moderate bullish above. And then we are getting a little bit more strength with the bullish above level over 12 to 15. And also oil is a little bit choppier. Yesterday, OPEC meeting took the price lower and it actually revisited another support level. We have another support level at 76.98. So um, right now it's trying to co coil into the $80 area. So what we're seeing here is that if it should trade, and these uh, this is on smaller time frames, if it should trade, it should enter into a short squeeze. So if it trades over eighty dollars and seventeen to twenty cents, it definitely needs to close above this ten EMA. We may see some velocity to the upside into the eighty dollars and thirty five cents. In which case we will be cautious because we're revisiting a prior high. And then afterwards, we could have more juice all the way into eighty dollars and seventy cents. All right, guys, so this is the pre-market game plan for today. We will wait for the open, and I will be on the mic close to the open. I'll be off the mic until then.
All right, everybody. So welcome back. Uh, hey, guys, if you're late, we have a pre-market game plan at nine o'clock. We're just waiting for the open right now. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So we did have the pre-market game plan early uh, and uh, we're waiting for uh, the market to settle down. You can see that at 8.30, we have, we have had big numbers come in. Market is reacting to these numbers right now. Like I said this morning, we had the average hourly earnings, non-farm employment change, unemployment rate, and uh, we're steering free and clear. Market is very strong, continuation strong. The levels are on the charts. If you wanna take you know, snapshots of the levels, I can put it back to uh, where you can see all the levels for the trading session today and even for the upcoming sessions. All right, here are the levels. All right, an attempt at the hourly rotation, uh, like I mentioned in the pre-market game plan, 16,398. We break above this level, we're continuing higher. It's already at 400. We're getting about, we have 10 minutes into the open and the price is uh, really reacting off of the numbers that came in at 8.30. We don't have anything else on the calendar for the trading session today. Remember that when we open, uh, we're going to see um, quite an impressive move because there's going to be the newer trading session participation, the contracts that are coming in the market at that time. So we are going to uh, pretty much uh, expect some pullbacks into the market. 36,100 is the area that uh, we're looking for possible pullback and a rotation from that point. The m and &E SMP, we're waiting for the 10 exponential moving average revisit and also the bullish above. So we're going to see where that's going to take us. And also NASDAQ has resistance into the 437 to 40 area. So all the way here from uh, 25 to 40 area, there's a really big area of extension resistance. All right, so you can take snapshots of these levels. Also, uh, we're looking at crude oil that could be moderate bullish above over $80 and about, I would say 20 cents. It needs to digest the 16 area. So it's not necessarily 16. The only thing that concerns me here is the declining 200 SMA, which may put the lid on price. So may create some heavy duty resistance at this point. We are less than two points away from S&P hitting 4,700. Gold, like I said in the pre-market game plan at nine o'clock, uh, has two levels that needs to break. Um, first level is a moderate bullish above level. If it should get over this cluster between 02 and 05 to 06, 06 may become a little bit more moderate bullish here and then ha may have continuation into the 1812. At this point, it will become a little bit more bullish to extend higher into the 1818 and 1820. So once again, we will be waiting for the open. Remember, the big gyration of the open is expected. All right, so just give me a heads up, guys. Let me know if you guys can see the screen, hear my voice. Just another quick sound check before we actually um, have the open.
five minutes into the open. <laughs> hey, Riaz. Okay, are you guys happy today's Friday? I'm super happy, super happy today's Friday. It's been like a really rough week uh, for me here. Um, for the trading room, it was awesome. Four consecutive, uh, four consecutive days, Monday through uh, Thursday. Really great wins. We have a really great start to the month of November. The way we're setting up this week uh, and the way we are, we will be closing this week is really actually very impressive because we can expect extension higher in next week. Uh, in the swing trading program, we had a, a truly, truly, truly tremendous week. Uh, we had one of the biggest winners is AMD, where we picked it up on November 2nd at 125 or 125, I think it was 125.30. Um, and AMD is just massively, massively um, up again, pre-market. Pre-market hit a high of 141.73. That was the biggest trade uh, this week. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the market is going to react uh, off of this uh, news. We also saw some uh, really massive buying into NVIDIA um, that hit a new all-time high. Yesterday, also Microsoft had a new all-time high. And Amazon is getting ready for a massive breakout, 3480, massive breakout. We can expect extension higher to 3750. So big move uh, expected in um, uh, within NASDAQ. UNH is on a, a daily rotation, UNH is component of the Dow. All right, so if you took a snapshot of the levels, I'm gonna take it back down to the five minute. All right, so we can watch price action as we're getting closer to the open. We don't have a trade off right off the open because the market is hyperly extended. We had the move that occurred. Actually, the move occurred. Let me show you when the move started. Okay, so the move started at 5 a.m. That is when everything started to pop at 5 a.m. So we're late to the game. So six, seven, eight, nine, four hours. We had four hours of continuous up move. So what do you think happens after, uh, after four hours, right? You can expect a base, which would be a digestion of the newly created highs. And from that point on, um, another like higher. Well, and depending upon you know how the range is, if it's a longer range, we can expect we can expect the price to definitely continue higher really strongly on strong momentum. Uh, and if the market does not decide to make, let's say, another leg up, we can expect for the price to pull back. So that pullback in price uh, will create trading opportunities for us, for individuals that have not participated from 5 a.m. But like I said, if you have been uh, into the uh, webinar last night, we had a free webinar last night and I invited you guys, uh, The uh, I invited everybody in here that wanted to uh, take a quick peek into our method and uh, into our training style. Um, and uh, we discussed the levels. So if you guys were in there, you pretty much know that we have discussed NASDAQ and S&P and trading is simple. That, it's exactly what I said. Trading is, is simple. It's not complicated. Traders have the tendency to overcomplicate uh, trading because of the lack of knowledge. Okay. Once you have the, uh, the baggage, the knowledge baggage, you can't miss it. Okay. All right. So here it is the breakout, the four hour high. Remember what I said? You have the recording, by the way, you have the recording. So I said that if it breaks above the high, it's going to extend higher. And if it breaks above the four hour high here in NASDAQ, it's going to extend higher and right on the money. All right. So, um, you know, that proves that yes, you can trade the overnight. Yes, you can day trade. Yes, you can have a trade, you know, set your entry, set your stop, and then let it go higher in the overnight. So like I said, don't overcomplicate things. Uh, trading should be literally stress-free. All right, let's go back to some five-minute charts, watch the price action, and then we'll see what's going on. All right, some pullback action, really shallow pullback action, no trades at this time. 
Uh, I'm seeing a lot of relative strength in YM and because the market is open right now, uh, we could talk about synchronicity and divergency. Uh, we have the Dow trading at 165 with, with 165 points to the upside, half a percent up. We almost have half a percent up in S&P and we have almost have half a percent up in NASDAQ. So really nice balance. And we have a relative strength index, which is Russell, which is up, was up 1%, a little bit over 1%, and now is up close to 90, 0.90%. So uh, this is the morning fleecing. This, these are the first ticks of the morning. Stock market as well opened. Uh, sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Riaz, four green days so far. Awesome, 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 awesome. So today uh, I like the price action in YM. So you can see here that uh, the price definitely shot up um, post news uh, and it had a pullback. We're seeing the price that is uh, stabilizing off the 10 exponential moving average and all the indices and that's on the five minute. And we're seeing that NASDAQ is tackling the all time high into the 434, 2375. Could possibly start blasting higher over this level. I'm just waiting very carefully for some levels that are setting into the New York trading session. So far, we have uh, the two minute. This is going to be super aggressive if we have a trade. Uh, the Dow is gonna be bullish above 36,215. So 36,215, that may be a trigger for the upside. I'm gonna put it at 16. 15 or 16, and then we're looking at a shelf of support of 140. So I'm gonna put just an alert there so I don't forget about it because I'm gonna move on to a different index. Okay, let's see. Let's do YM long. YM long, let's take it at 215 or 216. I'm gonna post 215. We're gonna use a really tight stop into the 145. Okay. All right, the trade has triggered. Uh, the first target is going to be into the two, um, well, the first target is has to be into the two, it has a little resistance into the 220, but I'm gonna put the first target into 250. Okay, first target is gonna be into the 250, and then we have another target at uh, 275 to 280. That's target to 275 to 280. And then we have 300 for the next target and then we have 325 325 yeah 325 all right so first target we're looking forward to 250 at 250 we're going to bring the stop to break even all right for those of you that are new um i like to take profits everybody's different this is the way i trade you don't have to trade like this this is what i do i like to share what i do that's what this room is all about so at target one, I scale out half of my position and then I bring my stop to break even and I scale a quarter into target two and then I bring my stop to target one and then the last lot I trail. If you And that is if you're trading with multiple contracts. If you're trading with only one contract, you stay in and you just trail the position and I'm trailing it live on the mic for everybody, okay? So instead of taking half the profits into, um, into 250, what you do is you raise your stop to break even. That's all you can do, all right? I will update you on that when we get there. All right, price session is continuous throughout the board, throughout all the indices.
like I said, the bigger resistance in the Dow is gonna, going to be uh, the 320, 320 to 325. We are six points away from target one at 250, two points away from target one at 250. If you do not want to scale out, you don't have to scale out. You just keep your entire position and you bring your stop to break even, which is 215. Not now, you need to see the price trade over 250 in order to do that. Now you can bring your stop to break even. So you don't lose anything on the trade. These are momentum trades, high momentum trades. We're heading over to 55 right now. Our next target is 275 to 280. We're not complacent. We're going to start trailing it aggressively because we're up. We don't want to lose any money. The next trail stop is going to come in exactly 30 seconds. We have a high 65. We are literally right now two points away from target number two. We are 15 seconds away. I would like to give it a little bit, so I don't want to squish it into the 50 just yet. Let it just trade. We're two points away from the top of the range of that target two at 80, and you can see that there has been some algo participation here for the trail stop. Like I said, let it wiggle a little bit. Now move your stop to 250. The price has gone really parabolic at this point. We want, we're day traders. We're not investors. Our trail stop right now is 250, 250 and out, 250 and out. And we're out. Okay, great job, everyone. All right, that was it, guys. Thanks for trading and thanks for flying TOL. Hope everybody had a good day. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right now the market is hyperextended, so there's not going to be a trade anytime soon. So this is it. Typically, if you make money in the morning, don't donate it later on. Yeah, Alonso, you can feel free to come back on Monday, another week. We have... Um, <laughs> I'll tell Max you swear. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I would go for a Bloody Mary right now, Paul. <laughs> oh my God, Wallace, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, Bob, it's the fulcrum, the fulcrum that I don't know if you got into that point into the class where I talk about fulcrums, but it's the fulcrum. <laughs> okay, so you can see that right now we're fast approaching 945. So uh, we took the trade very early on off of the open at 932. So 932 is one of the most aggressive trigger times that there is, and it can only be applied in super massive strong markets. And that's what drove me today 
uh, to take the trade. So I'm going to explain why I took YM and uh, what made me take YM. All right. So this is the, this is the, uh, here it is. All right, and see, it's going, uh, it's going to 300. I have no interest because my interest is right here uh, into the big chunk, uh, into the big chunk of um, um, of profits right here. So I'm not, I, I'm not nailing bottoms and I'm not nailing tops. Nobody can. So the fact that we had a high low, two minute high low off the open, bullish in a bullish context, right into the 10 EMA into a break of resistance right here. So it proved that it really wants to go higher. Once I had the price elevate trade above the two minute high, this was my entry right here. Okay, so I gave it a little bit of room into the 215 because I really wanted the price to confirm that it can potentially take out the prior high, the prior 932 high. So once it did, uh, I went long, okay? So if you wanted a looser, uh, a looser trail on this, it could, uh, it should have been into the uh, two, 220. So we should have brought our stop into the 220, but I really didn't want to give back anything else because let's face it at 935 and take a look at when this happened. It happened at 938. At 935, you have the first uh, uh, little reversal time that is happening in the market. So what goes up into the 935. So there are several things that are happening, right? So at 932, you get a trigger at 935, you get a trigger. And if they're in a continuation pattern at 935, which we did, then we can expect the pullback that is setting in at 935. There's another pullback that is coming in at 945. And this is the timing in the market. Okay. So because the timing in the, you have to play with the rhythm of the market. It, I didn't want to be complacent. When I'm green, I'm taking my money. I don't care if it runs up another five points or 20 points. I'm taking my money because that money is banked cash. So take little at a time and you will be surprised how, you know, you're going to chunk it all out. Trust me. It's, it's the way to go. It's the way to go. So uh, that was the rationale behind the entry at 36 to 15. I can't believe uh, that I'm talking about the Dow at 36,000. I mean, this is incredible. This is incredible. Okay. And it still has velocity, still has velocity to the upside, still yet. But remember, everything that goes right now, it's going into extension. There's divergence that is coming in from NASDAQ right here, and you can see it better on the two minute. So NASDAQ is pulling back while the uh, three indices continue to rally to the upside. And the other thing that I wanted to add here is that um, we had, so the beauty about it, so today I showed you how you can trade by trailing if you have only one contract, it's because you can't divide a contract, you can't take profits into targets. But if you're trading with one contract, then what you do is what I did today is that trail the whole position right into the way I trailed it on the mic today, trail the entire position um, at the same, uh, at the same uh, pace. Uh, for example, here, when we hit uh, the high into the um, 278, right? We had target 275 to 278, between 275 and, uh, and 280, uh, you were supposed to take profits and quarter profits because at target one, I take half. And again, that's a personal preference. If you're trading with uh, a, a lot of size, then you, obviously it makes more sense to scale out. And there's a reason for that. It is banked cash, right? So I love having money in the bank, especially when uh, the trade is running in my favor, right? And the other thing is that you're taking the pressure off of your trading. You're not having, uh, because you could have a sudden pullback in the price and the price go back to break even, or it could go back to stopping you out. So I don't want to have that. You are going to see that my win ratio is really high because this is what I'm doing in my trading. I'm taking profits early. So uh, does it have velocity to continue higher? Yes, it can. But if I'm not in a trade and the momentum is not constant, I'm, I'm not complacent and I'm taking profits.
Uh, I don't use any kind of that nonsense as Ace and Terra. Uh, no, uh, you have to trail it based on price action. There are three methods of trailing that I we, that we're applying, and we're not applying by ticks. But let's say, oh, I'm gonna you know trail by five ticks, or I'm gonna. Uh, I don't even trade in ticks. For me, it really doesn't matter what what a tick is. So I'm looking for points. But uh, trailing ticks is not uh, is not a way of trailing. I I mean I I can assure you that there is no institutional trader that does that. It, trailing should be priced, uh, based on price action alone, patterns and um, um, pivots, uh, support resistance areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Oh my God, guys, you crack me up. How can I be serious with you guys? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so let me give you an insight of what's happening in the market right now, and then we could go back because if we have a pullback, then we may have a reset in price. But typically, I like to trade on momentum, and if I have a trader is working for me in the morning, uh, then pff, I quit. Like I really don't want to be in the market. And uh, what I my purpose and my goal is for everybody in here to be conservative and to be positive on the trading session because you have the opportunity to grow a small account. If you start trading and if you put on five trades, six trades, seven trades, nine trades, you're ultimately going to pay a lot of commissions. You're ultimately going to lose money in the market because of the commissions. And you're going to penny yourself to death. You're going to be literally super burned out from all of that trading. Just focus on one or two trades. So I'm going to give you an example. If I lose on my first trade, obviously I'm going to be super focused uh, again. So it happened that today we had a winning trade. Wow, winning straight to, uh, it was perfect. Um, but um, if you should have, you know, um, a trade that, for example, stops you out. So you have a first trade, you stop out, no biggie, right? Because you have to allocate about three trade, three to four trades a day, okay? Um, and I'm going to come back to this concept a little bit, okay? So remember, you have three bullets in a day. If your first trade, in a, if on the first trade you lose, then you go in on the second trade, but only if the pattern is there. You just don't Hail Mary. You just don't do revenge trading. You just wait until the opportunity is there. And if the opportunity is there, then you take the trade. OK, other than that, you just take your loss and done. Tomorrow's a, tomorrow's another day. Uh, the highest velocity in price and the biggest participation comes from 930 to 10 o'clock. Uh, we are 10 minutes away from 10 o'clock and you can already see that we are having heavy divergency coming in from NASDAQ. And I can't wait to take a look at some NASDAQ stocks and see what's really dropping here to have this kind of price action reaction. Uh, we're seeing the S&P and obviously we're into massive resistance levels. OK, the reason why I chose the Dow, it was because it had relative strength and it had a really nice, robust structure compared to the rest of the indices. All right, L Lori and Laura, I'm pretty sure that they traded Russell. <laughs> OK, so I could tell you right now. So Russell was, again, um, a nice trade and it had a nice visit uh, into the old time high right off the open. So it uh, it punched uh, it punched higher. So this is the all time high from yesterday, uh, right at after 830, uh, after the numbers were out and made a new high. And then it pulled back. It kind of rooted into this pivot. The 20 SMA here is a really nice move. Uh, and then it rotated back to the upside. And at the time of the open, of course, you could see the volatility come in. You could see the fleecing. You could see the um, institutions come in and they bought it. They bought it right off of this pivot point. And then they crossed above the old time high, carried the price higher. You can see that we had another 
uh, minor pivot into the 28. We have another spike into the 34, took that out, went right into the pivot and notice what's happening into this pivot right here. So we went up, we came back down to revisit it. We went back up, right? We open and we went, we actually open, we went down and back up. This is a nice hammer candle confirmation that the price may be getting ready for higher and it's pivoting nicely into the pivot point right here. It just made a new high. Why do you think it does, didn't have like a big continuation right now? It just punched in a new high. And why do you think it's not participating? Because it's reading the divergency from NASDAQ. It's reading a little bit of fear and taking profit or whatever may happen. I'm going to go, like I said, into NASDAQ stocks um, and uh, take a look. Okay, Lori, if you're still in, I would suggest, you know, I mean, I know you know what to do, but, you know, the trail stop would be 39. 39 would be the trail stop. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, so no move in oil. Uh, typically, if oil is sideways, uh, you're going to see pretty much sideways reaction into these um, uh, indices more so into the uh, into the m and &E and all right. Uh, the other thing uh, that I'm looking at right now is uh, 3M, for example. If you want to, uh, if you want to mention some stocks, 3M and this swing swing trade idea. So not, um, it's not a uh, uh, day trade idea. So as you can see, it popped uh, in the um, right off the open, and then on the daily. Let me show you the daily pattern is actually uh attempting to close above the 50 sma so it's going to have a short squeeze most likely into the 185 uh 188 all the way to 190 right where this 200 sma hits uh so that would be uh that would be the area uh for the for the move so it has a tradable void from where it is trading right now so let's say 183.50 all the way into the one uh, 180, 188, 188, 190, and squeezing into the um, uh, top of that, uh, top of that 200 simple moving average. Starbucks is up for the day. I can't find anything that is weak within NASDAQ. I don't know what's going on with NASDAQ here. Um, okay, so Microsoft just made a brand new high. Uh, Nvidia still inside. We have a brand new high of close to uh, 2,999 uh, per share in Google. We're having Apple that is sideways. Uh, we're having Twitter, which Twitter is a 50-50 shot here. So I'm going to uh, put on Twitter here, uh, stock Twitter. All right, here we go. Okay, so this uh, congestion that we have here is pretty telling because uh, from the daily standpoint, if it trades under $53, it's going to be bearish. And if it trades over $55 that we discussed yesterday, it could run a little bit higher. So the short squeeze here could lead to a 57 for a target into the 57 to 5750. But we need to see a close above this, um, uh, definitely above this um, uh, 10 EMA. And this is going to be on my list for next week. Twitter is going to be on my list for next week. I'm either going to call it short under 53 or I'm going to call it long over 55. So this is going to be uh, the line in the sand for Twitter. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, a look at financials. Financials have been sideways. Um, AXP, a little bit of a pop up, uh, but Bank of America, JP Morgan, still sideways. Uh, Caterpillar is moving higher. So we have a lot of Dow stocks that are moving higher. Uh, we have, uh, uh, hey, John Carlo. Um, uh, yes, Kay, I'm going to look at that. Uh, never trade short Airbnb. I'm gonna, we're gonna take a look at that. I saw Peloton is like, wowzers. <laughs> okay. Uh, so th there were a couple of uh names that were literally trashed, like Zillow. Take a look at Zillow. Zillow is back into this is the weekly, is back into this uh, 200 simple moving average. We have discussed it yesterday, and uh, I said that it depends on how we are going to close. Uh, because uh, it could be bullish above or bearish below. I favor more the upside. And the reason for that is because the weekly is uh, just sitting very comfortably on the 200 simple moving average. And we may just have a swoosh down before the buyers are coming in. Uh, but Peloton was uh, definitely crushed, crushed um, 
and uh, you can see the move lower. It came in. It came in after a weekly rotation to the downside. And by the way, guys, I'm still looking at the market, so looking for entries. So don't think that I have abandoned. All right. So um, the daily chart. Okay, the daily chart suggests that it's getting a little bit of a buying here. And on all honesty, um, let me just squish it so you uh, so I can tell you. In all honesty, it's just a really um, I would say like a really mild reaction off of off of a support conglomeration of support from July from um, uh, from last year from July. Uh, but other than that, I don't see a lot of things happening for Peloton. For me, it has a really strong momentum um, on the monthly chart. The weekly chart has a really uh, strong momentum. So it depends on where we close this week. But uh, just letting you guys know that if we trade just below the low of this week, we're coming in and we're coming in. Probably it's going to go back to 50 bucks and back to 39 bucks. I mean, this is a, uh, this is a huge crash for it because if you think about it, it was last year uh, in December and it, we, we had a high in January. We had our all time high January 11th. We had a really frothy top. And then we came in uh, we uh, went higher, lower, higher, lower. So this is an A, B, C, D. Uh, and then again, uh, this is going to be, like I said, it's either going to make another swish. I, I, you know, I'm not here to do, uh, you know, interpretations because I am 100% technical. Like, I don't like to leave anything to, um, uh, um, to interpretation. I don't like to comment on anything. So I just base my decision on pure technicals. But what I'm saying is that, you know, with this weak candle to the downside, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to recover. If we are, so for example, this candle is going to be telling for next week because uh, if we are going to trade on Monday, so not today, I would just stay away from it today. But that's just me. So if I, uh, for example, if I see it higher um, above the Friday, uh, of the high, obviously if it trades above the Friday high, then it may have some room for higher, but it's so damaged, so, so damaged. Okay, um, never trade short ABN, uh, Airbnb. Airbnb higher. In fact, I do have Airbnb uh, shares and I have shares long-term in Airbnb. Uh, I bought them um, back, uh, like way back um, when it was trading at $155. Uh, that was when uh, I first linked in to Airbnb. Uh, and trading right now, as you can see today, had a high of 197.93. So 198 into the 198 from the highs. Uh, so to me, that is more than uh, th that is an investing uh, position for me. Uh, and you could see like, this is where I picked it up. You see the pattern inside bar 155. So when I'm investing, I like to also look at, um, a technical pattern. So it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm not like when you call a broker and say, Hey, I wanted some shares of Starbucks and he holds like, okay, yep. Yeah, i you got it. Uh, so I look at the technical pattern If the technicals are favorable, Okay, then I um, uh, I trade the same way. So I invest the same way that I day trade or a swing trade. So I look for technical opportunities to get in. And uh, this was uh, this was my entry right here. It what is actually one fifty five sixty because uh, uh, I just looked at my portfolio right now. It uh, my entry is one fifty five sixty right on the money to hide this candle. Okay, um, let's see some other uh, ideas. Uh, never trace your G O O. Oh yeah, right. I like uh, I like uh, G O O. Okay, S. There we go. All right. So yeah. The, the, oh wow, I didn't see this one. Oh, I wish you should have. Uh, I wish you could have mentioned it earlier. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful monthly rotation at forty dollars and thirty cents here, and it this is target level into forty nine and fifty. Yeah, beautiful. Um. MRNA, MRNA, um, I don't like the stock. I don't want to trade pharmaceuticals. I just hate trading pharmaceuticals. Uh, I don't like them. Uh, a lot of things can go wrong in pharmaceuticals. I never invest 
and very rarely that I have a, uh, that I have a swing trade or in any kind of trade in these uh, in these uh, pharmaceuticals. I I just don't don't like to touch them. Don't like to look. I look at them because I analyze them, so I analyze the sector. But other than that, that's pretty. That's as far as I go. Uh, but as far as Moderna. Um, uh, this is interesting here because this is support. It also has, so it has support all the way from 190 to uh, 230. So it should, it should start reacting uh, off of those levels. But based on this, uh, based on this close here, if it doesn't react uh, quickly uh, today, Monday, Tuesday, then it's going to consolidate lower and it's just going to have another leg down to the 190 and perhaps uh, into the uh, 158 or so, but this was a classic sell. So the sell came in at 320, 320 for the sell or puts if you're into options. And um, the stop was uh, 360 if you're trading common. Uh, SWKS, oops. All right, so I'm kind of looking at stocks right now. So um, SWKS, all right. Yeah, we're going to use this. SWKX, very sideways, very choppy. I'll just stay away from it. It's not ready to do anything. All right. Uh, ranch it. Oh, yeah. Ranch it. Totally miss on this one. I, if you're in, 10 o'clock reversal just kicked in uh, and it triggered higher. See, this is the first target because it's into the prior pivot. It went exactly into the 424. And your next target is going to be into 32. Next target is going to be all the way into these highs of 45 to 48. Full flag formation in S&P. Uh, price trading above 47.09. Uh, room to run into 17. Really strong base on the two minute. The five minute throw was really hyper extended. There's no legging in here. So you don't have a really good entry opportunity there. Uh, the only thing that I'm seeing is Russell. Russell is still trading on the 10 exponential moving average. And it could potentially break out again over 2447 with an extension higher. So you can see here that it has a tradable void into the next resistance into the 74, cl very close to the 74. Uh, James, James, uh, that's a great idea. Do I scale into long-term holdings as well? If I don't have a technical pattern, and if, for example, the stock is strong or has a really great performance and to earnings, then I leg in. So typically, I like to use uh, about five to six um, uh, lots uh, for my leg in uh, into investment. Any kind, or even if you get it, for example. So I, I, I what I do is because I'm every day in the market. I really don't have to wait for a pullback in certain stocks because I have alerts on them. So once the stock pulls back, then I, I take, for example, my full position for that investment position. But for example, if I have a stock that is running or is, you know, is, um, um, you know, uh, has a history of beating earnings and I just want a little piece of it. Uh, so let's say, for example, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, NVIDIA is like super, um, super extended. Let's put NVIDIA here. NVIDIA is super extended. You look on the weekly and especially when you're investing, you look at higher timeframes. You're looking at higher timeframes and you're seeing that, oh man, this is like so super extended. In fact, if you go really far out, because this is something that I typically do um, for my, for investing positions, you look at the quarterly and um, you're looking at the quarterly chart. Look how extended the quarterly. So each candle here, guys, each candle represents three months of trading activity, three months of trading activity. Now take a look at NVIDIA within the last, uh, within the last quarter. And remember, we have just started. <laughs> we have just started the last uh, quarter in, uh, in October, mid-October. So this is basically about three weeks, uh, three weeks of trading. In three weeks of trading, look at the quarter here. So it's definitely super, super extended. This would qualify. So if you want to invest, you have some money and say, hey, you know what? I just want to put some money into uh, NVIDIA. This would be the right opportunity to get in quarter position um, or, you know, let's say one lot, one lot, you take it here. I mean, with uh, if you're not trading on technical pattern, you could take definitely a lot here. The other thing that you can do is because you're using a scaling in, 
uh, when it, because when you're investing, definitely you're looking for, and I'm looking, I'm looking for stocks that offer really good dividends. In fact, I do have a scanner that is uh, set with names uh, of high dividend stocks. So I love my scanner with high dividend stocks because I want to be rewarded because even if the stock is not making money and it's not up in the PNL, uh, then the stock is earning dividend. So that's what I like. You make money either way. But for example, if you want to take a position in NVIDIA, you can take a position in NVIDIA if you're an investor because you have a really wide time horizon and you don't have a stop because you're an investor. There's no such thing as using stocks when you're investing, when you're investing. So when the stock actually pulls back, that will represent a, a good ad opportunity. But the ad opportunity is going to have to be, in my, uh, in my uh, case, uh, on a very strong technical level. So I'm looking for a pullback, I'm looking for a rotation, and then I am lagging into that position. So typically investing is a little bit different than, um, uh, than swing trading and day trading in the sense that you don't have a stop. When you invest, you don't have a stop. And then when you, uh, when you achieve some targets, I also like to scale out. So for example, you don't have to have like a massive portfolio to start investing. You could start investing, for example, in NVIDIA with 10 shares or 100 shares or depending on your account size. But don't use more than 1% per, for your portfolio because you want to have a very diversified portfolio when you're investing. So... When the when, for example, Nvidia is hitting uh, is hitting like uh, you know these kinds of highs, right? Uh, these kinds of extensions for the highs, right? Uh, then you're taking some profits, right? You it's time to take some profits, and then on the next pullback that Nvidia is going to have, or any stock is going to have, you're going to add back in the shares that you have sold previously because you're taking money out and you're putting it back in. So you're taking the profit into target. Pretty much you apply the same, uh, the same type of tactic that you're applying to day trading or to swing trading, but you're applying it on a higher uh, time horizon. So, uh, so yes, I like to scale in uh, when, for example, if I want to jump in Google or if I want to jump in NVIDIA or if I want to jump in Apple or Microsoft that are trading into the highs. If not, if you don't want to do that, remember, nothing goes parabolic straight up. Every single time the market goes euphoric into the highs, it's also going to have a pullback. And these pullbacks create trading opportunities, day trading opportunities, swing trading opportunities. And the bigger the pullback, uh, the bigger the investing opportunity. Because let's go back here, and I'm going to show you a quick example uh, about the fear mongering. Do you guys remember the fear mongering that was last year during the pandemic when the market, uh, when the market started pulling back? So let's see if you see it much better here or yeah, here it is. All right. So this is the pre-pandemic high. Oops. Okay. So let me, let me go to the monthly here. Okay. Cause it's so much better. All right. Uh, so this is 2020 right here. Okay, this is uh, this is 2019. This is 2020 right here. Okay, this is 2020, right? February 2020. Okay, so what happened is that you know this is December, this is January, and this is February, March. Okay, this is March. You see this pullback right here in Nvidia, right? Really shallow. This would have been the time to uh, to go long, uh, and that was in April, right, or May. Why do you think April or May were a good months to get in? Well, first of all, huge demand for computers, huge demand for, uh, for tech products, right? And NVIDIA is right on the money and it will deliver. So NVIDIA is one of those uh, safe havens for pandemics, for whatever you have. Uh, even it's, it's also kind of like a recession-proof uh, uh, stock, if you will. So uh, you see the prior highs here that are set in... Um, uh, 2019, right? So here, right before the pandemic hit, this was in February, lockdown came in March, right? And then April rebalancing and moving higher. <clears throat> so you can see what happened here. So we traded over these highs. This was a digestion of the prior highs. This was the leg and opportunity into the 77, right? So if you're stocking out any kind of uh, tape bomb that is happening in the market, 
And I mean, uh, you know, any kind of divergent news, any kind of really massive, ugly news that is coming in, uh, you're going to have a massive opportunity for trading any kind of black swan event and any kind of fear mongering. Uh, when you see it, uh, when, when you we, when you turn on CNBC and when you see that markets in turmoil, there's a special edition of markets in turmoil. You should rub your hands and go like, yeah, what am I going to buy now? You should start um, compiling a shopping list with stocks. And you should definitely focus on the stocks that you wish you would have had in your portfolio, whether for swing, whether for investing. So these phenomenons are not, you know, are not happening on a day to, on a on a yearly basis. The last time we had a market shock was uh, back in 2008 when we had the financial crisis, and then we had the pandemic in 2020, February, March, 2020. So that is exactly, those are opportunities to, uh, let's say, reshape your investing portfolio, right? Um, all right. So based on, uh, let's do this. So based on, uh, based on the weekly, uh, based on the weekly chart, let's do, um, okay. Uh, let's do some extensions. <coughs> Excuse me. Got to get some water. Okay, so I got an email last night asking about extensions uh, onto the uh, into Nvidia. All right, to find out further projections to the upside, Nvidia poised to continue higher to three three seven three hundred thirty seven right here. You can see that it surpassed the two two sixty one point eight percent fib, and it's going straight into the four hundred twenty three uh, fib right here. Now, like I said, this is a really high time frame, and it's really contingent on the price action and price action behavior and how it opens, how it closes, et cetera, on a week to week basis, because this is a weekly chart. So based upon the close that we had, the 313 with a high, I would expect that the price should continue to stall into the highs. But if we have any kind of divergence and a pullback, the pullback area and the reload, if you're looking for a swing trade, would be the $283 rotation prone from this point on. But if next week we trade over this week's high, we're heading higher. I mean, this has been a massive move to the upside, almost from $250 to $313, massive move for, for the upside. All right, on to the next question. Um, Sebash Z. Yes. Okay. So like I said, Z, we commented a little bit um, uh, into, uh, into Z price action. I would really like to see its reaction here going into next week uh, off of the 200 simple moving average. I, uh, you know, and we talked about it yesterday and I think that, uh, you know, it's not ready yet because what it did, like I said, it could be bullish above or bearish below, but I'm seeing it bearish below, but it's trying to hold the reason why it's holding here at $65 zone is because it's really trying to digest that 200 SMA from a higher time frame. So we don't have enough clarity to act on. So we don't have to, um, we will have to revisit it uh, uh, on Monday. All right, PINS, PINS. So I'm using this chart right here uh, because I'm still watching these indices. All right, so PNS pins. Um, all right, so we have a, a we have a daily rotation that happened today. So we cleared uh, we cleared the high of yesterday, but we're running into a lot of resistance. So I'm going to tell you what I like in pins. In pins, uh, we're going to be closing out this candle today at the end of the day. So going into Monday, remember what I said in the uh, webinar last night. Like the candles are super important. Price action is super important. And I said, watch the close today. So watch the close today because that the close today is going to pretty much be the close for the week. So uh, if this week is going to, if next week is going to trade above today's high, this week's high, implicitly this week's high, it's going to enter a short squeeze and that short squeeze is going to take the price all the way to 48 bucks. Okay. Now there's one other thing that I wanted to add here. OK, and this comes as a continuation from last night's webinar because we talked a little bit about forecasts of November and December. So typically uh, throughout the months of November and December, don't try to be bottom pickers because these things don't work as well in the last quarter. The last quarter is totally special. 
Okay, so super, super special. So buying bottoms, uh, especially in, in, in December, because we're, we're heading on towards, uh, towards mid-November going into next week. We have very little into, um, into, uh, uh, into Thanksgiving. We have very little to, into Black Friday and Cyber Monday. These are typically bullish days for retailers, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, we could see a participation higher all the way into at least uh, 48, to, uh, 48 to 50 bucks and even back into this uh, 10, uh, 10 EMA. Okay, what do I think about bonds, ZB? All right, so bonds, uh, let me put it on the daily chart because it's a lot more explicit here. So from the daily chart, they have been like super sideways for a very long time. Now what happened, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start with the hourly chart, okay? I'm gonna start with the hourly chart. So yesterday I mentioned that uh, bonds, uh, bonds futures or TLT, we're gonna uh, do TLT as well, TLT, um, uh, uh, the ETF. So we have been trading into the highs of 161. And I said 161 and change, 161.10 to 161.15. Uh, we have double top formation. The overnight trading session carried the price higher. And we came back at 4 a.m. Uh, to revisit the prior high from the New York trading session yesterday and also the prior high from Wednesday. So with that being said, any break above this resistance high, the 161.15 to 161.20 may elevate the price. However, I'm, I'm really not a big fan of it just yet because we're trading into a lot of resistance. So the continuation was very shallow. So the continuation came from, you can see here that we have a confluence of resistance areas from last week, plus resistance areas from this week. We broke them at... Uh, I think it was early this morning at eight o'clock or so. We broke, we just broke that 16 and we launched higher, but we're stuck into this moving average web. You could see it right here. So we have uh, the declining 50 SMA. We have the flat 20 SMA. So we have, you know, we have a lot of things that are, uh, that are putting pressure on price, uh, on price right now. Uh, if today, if today uh, we're going to close above the 50 simple moving average, then we are going to start uh, moving higher next week. But until then, still very choppy. Yeah. So that was a little bit of review. Now let's review the indices here. Uh, I'm going to take you guys to the 15 minute, which is going to be telling. We have a topping tail price very extended from support. Next support is going to be into the 220. This could possibly be a short here. I don't like to short. I like to uh, look for pullbacks. Uh, but, uh, and again, it doesn't have a good risk reward ratio. And again, the market is very bullish. You can see that it's up 0.90% uh, again, over 300 points to the upside, really high, high, high. Uh, typically what happened, I'm gonna tell you what typically what happens. We haven't had a pullback at 10 o'clock. Typically you should have some kind of a pullback at 10 o'clock. It's 1018. So most likely that we're gonna start a pullback process. The rest of the indices are holding really strong. So you have to go buy the indices and what all the indices are doing in sync. Uh, so there are 15 minute rotations pending on the Dow. So if the Dow should break below 300, uh, it can possibly go lower for, I wouldn't say for that much, but around for about 10 points. Let's be straight for about 10 points, all the way, uh, all the way, let's say here, a max target of 280. Five, and then if 285 is going to drop, you can see it from this candle low, then it's going to start uh, dropping to about 250 level. Remember, we have the pull from right there. This is something that we teach in our in our class on how to how and what to focus on. We also have a doji in S&P. The price is also extended from the 10 EMA. These could be really short term scalps. Uh, this could be short under 05, but again, the market has a reason why it's trading into the highs. And with NASDAQ making new highs, I would be really reluctant on shorting. So I would much rather focus on the pullback, live through the pullback, and then look to see if there's any uh, trades opportunity opportunities. But what I'm saying is that we have a doji here. We go doji. And if we take out this doji low into the 4711, uh, so if we print, if we print, oh, I'm sorry, if we print 4705, sorry about that. I, I meant to say, the stop should be 47.11. And if the price trades below 47.05, then the price should start going lower. But it's not going to be like an 
it's not going to be like something weak with a normal pullback where you can make a lot of money on, on the counter trend. Okay. Counter trends don't really work that well in an extreme bullish market. There's a reason why the market is where it is. Right. And there's a really strong reason why, uh, you know, it keeps on getting bought. So don't, I, I'm never trying to outsmart the market. Okay. I respect the market and respect everything that the market does. I never like to uh, consider myself, oh, I'm going to be smarter than the market or smarter than any uh, portfolio manager or hedge fund or no. Okay. So these are moves that these can be algo moves. This is not a big institutional powerhouse move. This is going to be some kind of uh, algo swift reaction. And it could be so fast that you may get in and you may not have time to take your profits because remember at all the platforms that we're trading on their retail platforms, they don't allow really fast paced execution like nanosecond execution. Um, all right, this is pretty much it guys. Uh, we're waiting right now, it is 1021. We made our money, uh, easy money in the market. Exactly, Joshua. Exactly. The market tells you what to do. Trade the charts and for exactly. Uh, I couldn't say it any better. Guys, just, you know, highlight what Joshua said, put it on a piece of paper and, you know, make a poster out of it because it, it's 100% true. Joshua, 100% right on the money. Be humble in front of the market because uh, the market is, uh, 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 the market is, um, uh, has its own reasons to stay where it's staying. But like I said, you know, these are, if you're feeling a little risky with half the size, quarter size, something like fun size, okay? You could, like I said, if it trades under 300, then it could continue lower. Um, uh, it, like I said, for about 10 points. And then the decision is gonna be here into the 280 to 250. So it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be an easy trade. It's gonna be slow, slow, slow. Plus, uh, it has another resistance into the 285. So it may not bleed that fast. <clears throat> uh, James, that's a great question. If I have a win for the day, do you stop trading for the day? Uh, when do you stop? That is a great question. Okay, so typically if I would have been up a little bit more in the trade in the, uh, in the Dow that we have this morning, uh, I would risk only half of that trade, half of the profits on that trade. So for example, if I would have made, uh, I don't know, let's say $500 on that trade, I would have risked $250. But because I don't have, uh, pretty much what I did is I have my budget. So because I don't want to half that budget, I don't want to take another trade unless it's something that is really striking and something that is really setting up picture perfect and it has a really small risk. Other than that, I, I'm not going to take another trade. But typically what you do is if you have a winning trade, the next trade that you take, it's up to you whether you want to go full size, depending on the setup that you're having. But if you're not having a reliable setup and at the time of the day, it's not in sync with the setup that you're taking, you should only risk half of the size that you, has uh, half of the gains that you have uh, that you have in your account. Okay. Hey, Paul, have a great weekend. Awesome. I will see you on Monday. Happy golfing. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much what I do. Uh, what I do, James, that and that is a great question. So I'm really happy that we have this opportunity to have this session and to have a lot of Q&As. It was basically a Q&A session. And all your questions were, uh, were awesome today, right on point, right on the money. All right, so you can see that the price went into the 90. Like I said, it, it's going to have problems. And you see how it's trading from 90 to 95, 90 to 95. And then the line of the sand is going to be between 90 and 85. It break, if it breaks 85, then it's going to go lower. But it's so painful. I mean, if you're watching, and this is a 15-minute time frame, but if you're watching it on the one minute, you could see how choppy it is to the downside. And that is because it has a lot of hurdles of, um, price has a lot of hurdles for the downside. Uh, hey, James, uh, if you have a loss to start, do you stop? No. So before I trade, that's another great question, by the way. So guys, James is on fire today. So he's asking all the right questions. So uh, first of all, if you're a day trader, uh, you typically have to allow yourself 
uh, to trade a maximum of, let's say, four trades, four trades a day. So your budget is for, for four trades a day. But how does that work? Because not so fast, right? First of all, you have to look at your account size and determine what is my account size? What is, what is, what, what are my funds? Okay. What are my funds? How much money do I have in my account? So I can take those, uh, for example, four trades a day. Uh, if you have, for example, let's say a $20,000 account, all right, your risk per trade is going to be 1%. So that's $200 per trade. So what does that $200 mean? It doesn't mean that I'm going to enter here now. Let's say I'm going to go short here at 90, okay? And I'm going to put my stop to accommodate $200 because it could be like here or it could be here or it could be here. No, you position size for that, okay? You position size for that. So by position sizing, I mean how many contracts can you fit in a risk of, uh, of that size? So for example, going to give you an example here, 15 minute, right? You have a high, right? You have a high of 375. And let's say your entry is going to be 300, right? So you have a stop of 75 points, 75 points. You guys following? All right. So when you have a stop of 75 points, then if you're trading with one full size contract, okay? So one full size contract, for 75 points, it's going to be over 300. It's going to be like $370 or something like that, or 375. Okay. So it's going to be way beyond your $200. Now, if you only trade full size contracts, I know many of you guys trade with top SIP, many of you guys trade prop accounts and do not allow you to trade micros. You cannot take this trade because this trade exceeds it, it's double your position size per trade. So you would be chewing two bullets out of four, right? Remember, you take four trades a day. So what I mean by that is that when, for example, for this stop that you have here, right? It's between $375 and $400 for the stop. So you're doubling your risk. You're gambling. You're doubling your risk. So especially that it's not a reliable, you're going against the trend and that's that's why a lot of traders are losing their money because they're going against the trend, okay? So what you need to do is determine, okay, if you can trade micros, right? If you can trade micros, obviously, you know, that four, uh, that $400 risk becomes $40 risk. So you can see that with a $40 risk, right? You can fit in more contracts. So you can you can switch to trading micros. So if you're not trading, let's say a top step or any kind of other prop account that doesn't allow you to trade day trade micros. So you position size and see how many micros can I fit in my $200? So you can still take the trade, right? So that's, that's how you do it. All right. So um, uh, what, time, uh, what time chart do you watch for position sizing in a very fast market? That's another great question. So uh, I'm going to get to this. I'm going to answer this question first. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to, uh, then I'm going to go back to the position sizing. So never trade short. First of all, you need to have a template right in front of you because trading should not be uh, in trading. There's no thinking in trading. You don't have time to think in trading. So you have to have all the knowledge. You don't start trading and then you go like, oh, I blew my account. I think I should learn how to trade. No, you first learn how to trade and then you open a brokerage account. That's the way it is. So what you need to do is you need to have a template with a uh, full-size contract and with micros. And for example, you have a $20,000 account and you risk $200 on a trade. Have that template with $200 and say, hey, how many contracts can I fit into that $200? Am I going to take micros or am I going to take full size? So when you go on that table, you know exactly what you need to, uh, how many, uh, how many, um, you know, how many contracts do you, I'm going to show you an example, but if, uh, first off, I'm going to go back, circle back to the question about position sizing. So you allocate four trades a day, for day trading, and each trade should be $200 by position sizing. 
whether full-size contracts or micros. So uh, when you allocate this budget, remember that if the trades are going against you and if you have four losses, that means you're out for the day. You don't take the fifth trade because that's discipline. All right. And you don't go firing trades just because you have a first trade that it has a loss. Who cares if the first trade is a loss? Who cares if the second trade is a loss? All you have to do is have the right mindset because uh, tr in trading, you don't have the guarantee that all the trades are going to work. Obviously, if you have the right knowledge, you're going to win 60% of the time, 70% of the time, 80% of the time. Without trading education, you win only 10% of the time and ultimately you're going to blow up your account. A lot of traders are using improper sizing. For example, they have a $5,000 account and they start trading right off the bat with one full size contract and they blow their account. Why? Because on a trade, they risk approximately 60% of their account size for a stop. And in two trades or three trades, they're done. Or if they get lucky, they may last a week or they may last two weeks. Okay. All right. So that's a little, um, like I said, going back to this example in YM, you have to have a lot of discipline and you have to have your own rules. Um, you have to create, so if you have been long enough in the market, you can create your own rules. If you have sufficient education, you can create a whole, you know, you can create the rules. And if you don't have a rules and if you need full, complete trading education, you can come to trade out loud. We teach you from A to Z. Forget everything that you know about trading. We are rewiring your brain for trading to start identifying patterns, decide identifying trades. So I'm going to go right now and show you a quick example of how you need to have that template. Um, and uh, that is going to help you with trading and position sizing. Uh, I have it. I've been trading for so many years and I still have it because I don't want to do the math. And you can't literally do the math that fast. OK, so I'm going to show you the template in just a second. All right, this is what we have in class and how I show my students in class how to position size and to grow a small account. All right, so you can do this for full size, right? You could do this for full size or you could do it with micros. Uh, it doesn't matter. The most important thing that you have is actually the, uh, the size. So this, is, this represents 1% for your account size. Typically, futures traders allocate a wild percentage for trading and they don't respect the parameters, okay? So it's fine, for example, if you have a $50,000 account and you take the trades, you say, hey, you know what? I don't want to position size. I want to just take the trades with one contract. It's fine because you're using way, way less than 1% per trade and you're like averaging out and, uh, you know, and kind of like, you know, having, uh, having, having a good structure, okay? But if you have a smaller account, you definitely need to position size. Your ultimate objective is to grow that account and be consistent. And you can only do that if you are using the same risk amount per trade. If you, don't be all over the place, okay? Because you could have 50 point stop in the Dow and then you can have 10 point stop in, um, I don't know, yes, you could have 50 point stop or 30 point stop or five point stop in NASDAQ. So you're going to be all over the place. Okay. If you know what you're doing, that really doesn't matter that much. But if you have no idea what you're doing, you cannot grow your account unless you position size. And that goes for stocks as well. That goes for stocks as well. So determine what your account size is. Look at your account size. This could be like, you know, your homework for this weekend and say, hey, I'm going to sit alone with my account here. Look at your account size, see how much money you have in your account, and then determine what that 1% is. Do your charts, okay? If you have a bigger account, 50,000 and uh, over 50,000, then definitely you're going to have a chart for a full size, right? For full size. So you're going to have $500 and you can have full size and you could have also a micro because if you want to swing trade and if you have a wider stop, then it's 
uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of other advantages for, you know, taking micros. You can scale out into targets and this and that. So it's great. Micros are fantastic for swing trading uh, and for really high, uh, for really wide stops. Okay. But de decide on your, you know, uh, more advanced traders can use 2%. So you really need to, you really need to, uh, you know, if you, if you want, uh, you can only grow your risk size only if your account has, uh, grown at least 35%. If it grew 35%, if it increased in size by 35%, then you can uh, increase your position size. And then you look at your account and say, what is my, what is, what is the new amount that I have in my account? It's this. Okay. So then you recalculate your 1% and 2%. You don't vary it by week or by trade. Okay. This is the only thing that remains constant. All right. So let's move back to the charts. All right, and let's see. A consistency, never trade short. Consistency is difficult in fast moving markets. It's 100% wrong. No, consistency should, cons consistency has nothing to do with whether the markets are fast or slow, have nothing to do. Consistency has to do with pattern recognition, with higher ass trades, with position sizing and money management it has nothing to do with the pace of the market. Uh, to position size, well, if you have this template, it's a no brainer. And if you have been trading long enough, you could see that, for example, in the Dow, you're pretty much, you can expect the stops based on the volatility to be between, let's say, anything between 40, between 40 points and about 70 points. It's not that hard. And once you have the template, all you have to do is a little bit of work, have your template for your risk size. And all you have to do, it, it takes like a nanosecond. You saw this, you saw the slides, right? So if your risk, let's say, is two hundred dollars, and if you have a ten point risk in um, S and P, it's four points. And if you have been trading for a while, you know that because it's wired in your brain. Plus, you have it right in front of you. Keep it next to your mouse. Have a big piece of paper right in front of your monitor. P put it on the wall. If your desk is right against the wall, put that against the wall. It takes like from the computer to the wall. Just count one, two. It takes two seconds. So even if you have like a five, even if a trade lines up in five seconds, there's no excuse. You have to know that. So having that template is imperative for trading, for position sizing. It takes one or two seconds to look at that template. You don't have the template, it's really hard because you're going to have to think it's like, oh my God, how much is it? The stop is this, this is that. No, but do the math very quick. I mean, it's so super simple because you know exactly you know, typically what kind of stop you have. And you can, so if you have, for example, you know, uh, have like five points. So for example, if you're trading m and &E s &P, you could have five points, 10 points, 50 points. You don't have to go to point by point. And then you average it out, right? Is this a five point? Is, th is, this, is this stop between five and 10 points? You don't have to be that precise. If the stop is between, let's say five and 10 points, then you're going to be using, let's say if you're using micros, and you have a 200 point risk, then you could use, let's say eight contracts, okay? Or you could take it with a full size contract if it's less than five points. Uh, if it's 10 points, then you know it's about four contracts. Anything else than 15 points, these are rare occasions and volatile market conditions. Uh, Anna, that's a great question. How much time does a newbie need to go through the learning curve to start trading futures in your experience? So if you're doing it on your own, it's probably going to take you anywhere between five and 10 years. I, and I'm not kidding. I'm not saying this with any intention, but it's going to take you a long time. And literally, um, um, I mean, Joshua, okay, guys, for those of you that have been trading for a while, you need to be around a lot uh in order to make it okay in order to make it i can tell you that and i share my trading experience with everybody i did not i i was not born into the markets literally everybody has a starting point i could tell you what you know i could tell you what my mentor told me and when i really felt that it took off so with with us 
Exactly, Lori. 10,000 10, hours of exactly. Malcolm Gladwell, read that book, 10,000 hours to mastery. It is key. You need to have time to be in front of the computer to watch charts, 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 analyze charts. Where's support? Where's resistance? What is the rotation? Where's the rotation? So with the course, uh, with the course, or my purpose for the course is to provide a hand-holding system and literally crash the learning curve. So everybody that joins the course will have a good head start in the sense that they receive education A to Z, the most robust trading education that we have in the industry. So I had someone that looked at my course that um, the, the guy was a hedge fund, okay? So he's actually in my swing trading program because he loves trading ideas. He's in other several programs as well, uh, several, he's following uh, other several traders because they love to fish around and scan. And basically he uses me as a scanner, right? For his trades and he selects what, what he trades on based on his criteria from my trades and he takes some of my trades. Uh, so uh, what we provide here, and he took a look at the course and he said, wow, this is the, like, the most robust trading education course. Uh, when you start trading with a firm, with a hedge fund, you are provided with this type of education at this environment. You have a big binder of rules of things that you need to watch. Uh, your complete trading education is there. It's ju just like the pre, uh, uh, it, it, it is called the pre, uh, um, forget what it's called. It's like pre something. Um, anyways, I'll remember that. It's like pre, uh, anyways, I'm going to remember it and let you guys no. Uh, so you're having that pre-education, right? Before you actually start trading. And when you start trading, you're trading assisted. So you have a personal mentor that is like every hedge fund portfolio, portfolio managers and everything. They have, a, they have a mentor that is assisting them technically. They have also a performance coach that is um, speaking to them uh, on a week to week basis on a month to month basis and working through their demons. So they have a lot of help that retail traders don't. So that's when I step in. So I have the trading course that teaches you technical analysis, teaches you price action, teaches you candlestick, everything from A to Z that you would learn in an institution. Psychology, trading psychology, how to put everything together, how to trade without having any kind of stress. More so after the course, you step into the trading room. The trading room is exactly like you saw today. So I trade very conservative plays so you guys can grow your account and you could follow me along. You could follow the trade. You don't have to reinvent your trades. Okay. So I'm spoon feeding you the education and I'm spoon feeding you the, um, the trades. The reason for that is because you need to develop your consistency and you need to become confident because once you can see how the method works and it not just it doesn't just work one day or it doesn't work only in a bull market. It doesn't only work in a bearish market. It works in any kind of market environment. I have never traded pandemic environment ever in my life. Nobody today has ever traded pandemic, right? The last pandemic we had was in 1918. So nobody knew what was gonna happen in the market. Uh, nobody knew what was gonna happen with the financial crash. And yet I traded that again. Nobody knew what was gonna happen in 2000 in, uh, in the tech bubble, right? The dot-com bubble. So these are things that you learn along the way, but you apply the same rules and the same routine that you apply in any market environment. And if you are flexible enough to apply that along with maximum discipline, you're going to make your trading work and your trading is going to work and it's going to deliver. For example, last year, I made more money last year than in the last five years. So it was that that uh that strong of a year 
these opportunities come like probably two or three times in a lifetime. We don't know in our lifetime, we're gonna, still going to have like probably, I don't know, because the things are kind of like uh, crazy all around the world. But um, once you learn how to trade, my point is that you could trade any market, any market environment. You will have the discipline to look for the trades and you will not think that, oh, I Listen, when you don't have the complete package of education of what to look for in the market, because that would bring confidence to your trading, you would know what to look for and where your entry is. And therefore, you will be able to um, understand what I'm watching in the market. And then you will understand entry points, exit points. So you will not have to wait for me until I say, okay, this is along here with the stop here. And we're going to do this and that. And this is how we try because you will know how to do it because the trading room is the continuation of the trading course. Okay. So the trading room is open for everybody. Okay. But you know, 95% of the members in the trading room are students, are students that have taken the course. The other thing is that the course is live and it's monthly. I teach the course. It is every single month. So you come into the course every month, at least for a year, because repetition is key. Don't think that. And that is one of the re other reasons why traders fail, because they think that they read a book or they come to a webinar or they take a little class here and there. It's like, oh, this class is going to teach me about entries. Boom, I'm done. My God, entries represent only 10% of the equation. That's it, 10%. So you're going to imagine that if you know only entries or if you, know, if you don't know money management, if you don't know position sizing, if you don't know risk management, if you don't know trailing, that, tra that, that little course is useless. So you need to have the whole package. You have to understand. You have to have the whole package. I don't care where you're getting your education, but unless you have your whole package, you're not going to get anywhere. I'm telling you this. And then uh, you need to have experience in the market. Experience in the market comes with following in the trading room. If you're in the trading room, I take conservative trades. I read the market environment. I provide with, you know, the explanation of why we took the trade there. Of course, if you take the course, you would know why. And the explanation would just reinforce that thing. So the fast track to uh to becoming a uh, to become a professional trader to trade on your own is the winning recipes to take the course and join the trading room that is the winning recipe okay um the other thing like i said you can spin your wheels with trial and error but it's going to take a long time and it's really painful and that's the reason why 95 or 97 i don't know what the exact percentage is of traders that begin trading give up because they blow one account, they blow two accounts, they go like, who said that I can make money in trading? You cannot make money in the trading. Nobody can make money in trading because they're bitter, right? They're super bitter about trading. Why? Because they don't have the trading education because you're either trading on the side of institutions and in sync with them or you're trading against them. You have to know the levels. You have to know these uh, patterns that work. And trading is visual. You can't really read it in a book or on a DVD. It's more complex. You need to have the experience in the market. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. So when I started day trading, when I first, you know, took my first day trades, uh, you know, and it was good, but I, it, I still didn't see it work. So like I said in the webinar, I was fortunate enough to have mentoring for that. And that changed the whole, the, my whole thinking and everything else. Because I saw that what is taught to, to the retail trader represents only 20% or 30%. Okay, they're missing out. That's why, you know, they're writing, you know, everybody's writing a lot of books on trading. Everybody's, you know, and that's because, you know, they're not all bad, but they're teaching segments. They're, they're not teaching the whole thing. The course teaches the A, A to Z. That's it, complete. You don't need another book, another webinar, another seminar, nothing. You want to trade, you are serious. If you want trading to be your career, this is the course for you. 
Uh, and my mentor told me when I first started day trading, he said, and I was making money. I was three months into the process, then six months into the process, consistently profitable every month after month after month. Not kidding you. Still have the stats from back then. And my mentor told me, he said, you're only going to be a profitable trader. And I was profitable. And I then I really didn't understand what he was saying. And he said, you're going to be a profitable trader in about three years from now. It's like really, really great, amazing trader. You're going to be a great trader three years from now. And I'm like, he's crazy. Because like, I'm making money right now. Are you kidding me? Like I am making money right now. So then I understood as time went by, then I understood that, you know, I had my fair share of trying stupid stuff, you know, um, you know, following and, you know, uh, falling into the trap of those artificial indicators. And but trust me, there's not one thing that I haven't tried. Okay. Holy grail. Oh yeah. I was on the hunt for the Holy grail because I wanted to simplify my trading. Okay. So then I understood that trial and error, trial and error, try, you know, so the more I went outside of my, uh, of my already planned system, I started to lose money. And then I went back to the system. Right. And then I never looked back. And then I said, okay, that's it. So now I understand, but you need to have three years in order to compete, to be a really complete trader. Why? Because you need to go through the market cycles. You need to go through earning cycles. You need to go through market environments. You need to go through different market contexts. You, you need to go through the market. You need to understand the market. I can help you with that in the trading room. I can help you read the market and have a really good gauge and high accuracy with the course. And then I could keep you on track in the trading room. I don't know a time when I was wrong on the directional bias. I have no idea. I mean, there are people in the trading room that have been with me for a very long time. And, you know, you guys can say, hey, was I, was I once wrong about the directional bias in the market? I don't think so. Okay. Have we had losing trades? Yes. Because as a day trader, you need to have a stop. Okay. As a day trader, you need to have a stop. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question about the trading room membership. So if you guys want to sign up, you could go to um, tradeallow.com and go under the uh, service tab and you have the trading room right there. But yeah. Um, oh, you mean if I quit the trading room? Never, yeah, never trade short. You mean if I quit the trading room? No, I'm not going to quit the trading room. I love it. I, I love trading way too much. This is, this is my, this is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And believe me, this is what grounds you. So for me trading, <laughs> no, I'm not going to quit the trading room. The, um, I love trading. We don't trade a lot. We trade just like you guys saw, like we try to look for the easiest soft spot into the market. We don't, I mean, I, I mean, literally guys, this, this is my job, right? I have the trading room because I trade. So I want to help you guys trade as well and keep you on the right side of the trade, keep you on the right side of the money. So I trade anyway. So yeah, no, no, not quitting. I love trading. And besides, I mean, guys, it's only two hours a day and it's so rewarding, right? <laughs> Guys, the market is done. We're getting close to 11 o'clock. Super chop chop in the market. I'm not seeing anything else. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Full transparency right here. Hey, Wallace. No, I'm not limiting. Not limiting. Yeah, Anna, you're welcome. Feel free to ask anything. 
I mean, trading is awesome. I could tell you right now, I mean, it's addicting when you know what you do in the market. <laughs> uh what do i think about the last hour uh typically the last hour uh throughout the week not necessarily on a friday but monday through thursday represents the power hour uh i like to trade for example if the market is uh into crash mode i like to trade the last hour the last hour typically offers uh reversal and we also teach that in the course uh, people that have full-time jobs, definitely they can still participate in the market if they cannot uh, trade with me, for example, in the first two hours. We have strategies that we teach uh, and that are applicable on different time frames so they could take advantage of that. So, for example, what I mean, what better example than last night? You can view the uh, you can view the video that we had last night into the trading room. Uh, and uh, I gave you two trading ideas. Right. And we were uh, the class, the webinar um, concluded last night at, I believe it was 810. OK, so I said that this is uh, this candle right here on the four hour chart is going to complete, is going to um, close at 9 p.m. And I said, if the tr if uh, the price is going to break above the 9 p.m. high, it is going to go higher. I mean, what better proof? What better proof? You have the recording. Please review the recording, Anna, from last night. Okay? So I said, if it breaks above this high and it broke above this high, it went higher. So you don't have to necessarily. Are you going to have setups every night? Maybe not, but you don't need setups every night. You don't need to be a compulsive trader. The less you trade, the more money you make and the less commissions you make. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't trade the afternoon. I don't trade the afternoon. But I do teach strategies in the class. Oh, thank you so much, Rakesh. Oh, thanks, Anna. Silver. Yeah, okay. So here we have, like I said, and by the way, you know, just a quick disclaimer here. So uh, with, uh, with gold, uh, I have been in gold since September and uh, it is a long-term trade for me. So I have been in September, so I have lived through this whole entire chop. OK, so uh, definitely you can see that the price went from the moderate uh, moderate bullish above. That's why we have these levels. And like I said, in the pre-market game plan, and by the way, this session is recorded and you guys are going to receive. I mean, I think it's recorded. <laughs> OK, it's recorded. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to do that. OK, so uh, in the pre-market game plan, I highlighted the fact that if you and for me, I really don't want to take another, I, and for me, it's not an ad, not until Monday or Tuesday in gold uh, for the position that I have because I have it a long term. Uh, but I mentioned in the pre-market game plan that if it trades over 02 to 05, it's going to snap back up to the 05 to the to the 06. This is going to be the uh, the bigger breakout. Anything over 05 is going to uh, create bullish impact all the way into the 1810 to 1812, and 1812 is going to be bullish above to the next levels, as you can see here, the 1818 and 1820. That's how easy trading is. I mean, you're looking at the levels, you know exactly what you need to do. So it's going to be bullish above. Continuation, this is a target one, this is target two, and if it blasts over uh, over target two, it's going to go higher to target three, and so on. 
silver. Let's take a quick look at silver. You saw the a pullback in silver, the abrupt pullback in silver that we had. Let's put on the daily charts. Uh, we had an abrupt pullback in silver on the third this week, and then a swift rotation back to the upside. So as you can see here, let me just take this off. Uh, silver is coming off of uh, coming off actually from a really massive um, support zone. Uh, this whole entire year, and in fact, since 2020, since it blasted higher, it created a high. And then uh, in February, and by the way, we had this trade in February right here that was just absolutely amazing. It was a long-term trade target in just one or two days. It was fantastic. It was just, just fantastic. But this level right here, not only that, uh, we don't have a double bottom yet. We don't have a double bottom. You may see double bottom, but it's not a confirmation no uh, double bottom. So we need we need the price to uh, we need the price to at least go above twenty five dollars in order to confirm that double bottom. So until then, we don't have that. We have a prior pivot high that is sustaining the support level that we have here, and you can see it. Uh, and ultimately, if we have the price trade over $25, that is the time when it's going to start expanding higher to 26, 27, 28 or so. And that is when you're pretty much going to expect, uh, you know, a much larger velocity uh, for higher. And again, if you're looking at uh, gold, gold is gold is very interesting. And the reason why I said that I don't have any interest in adding to it uh, is because it hasn't, uh, it had not it did not break above the uh, prior month high, the September high, uh, I'm sorry, the October high uh, into the 1816. And once it breaks 1816, it's going to go higher. 1836, 1880, 8, 1900, 1918, and higher from that. So I like it from the longer standpoint. Yes, I do. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Doji Man. I forgot about that. Yes, so I have a chart where I show the volume that is coming into the market in the morning, and it's very similar. So the first we have, so there are two power hours. There's a power hour that is coming from 9.30 to 10.30, and that's what I focus on because let's face it, who doesn't want instant gratification? Who wants to hang out here doing nothing for two hours? No, so we made our money today. We were done in what, 15 minutes and we're done. You could have the rest of the day to yourself or you could study charts. You could take the course, revisit it, re, you know, re-listen to it. So the course is live and then you're going to receive the recording. Uh, the recording is as, it, uh, is for a backup. So you guys, you know, uh, have it just in case you, you know, uh, you miss something in the course and you would like to revisit it. It also comes with a course uh, manual. Uh, and it is like an e-course. It is the foundation for the life course, actually. Uh, but if I was to put in words what I explain into the course, it would it would probably be fifteen hundred pages. That's how much I talk in the course and explain in the course. So every slide, there's about five minutes or ten minutes on a slide. So um there's 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 a lot that is taught so this time the course is going to be seven or eight days i don't know because i have added some more stuff to the course and then we're having like the early black friday with uh with all the uh, uh gifts you're going to get received the swing trading course uh that is on demand that is not live it's going to be on demand but that's 49.99 so we sell it for five thousand dollars it's going to be yours for free OK, so you're going to know how to swing trade as well. Uh, and then uh, and we talk about uh, we also talk about um, um, seasonality. Seasonality is very important to trading. OK, seasonality is extremely important to trading. OK. Um, what indicators? So we talk about as indicators, as part of technical analysis, we talk about how to use uh, moving averages, how to use the volume to identify, but that simple volume and not volume profile and all that BS. Uh, so we're talking about, you know, how to, uh, how to enhance your performance just using really basic uh, indicators that are for free with any platforms and nothing that is outside of what we what you see in these charts right here, and the other thing is that you're going to learn how to do these confluence levels. These are the bullish above levels, support, uh, pullback expected. So if the price goes below, beyond uh, beyond this point, it's going to go lower. Confluence support again. So all of these levels that are going to be you're going to be able to calculate for yourself 
ahead of the market open. Hey, Wallace, have a great one. Okay, okay, okay. Wowzers. Okay, so Rakesh. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. You're still holding NASDAQ long. OMG. Okay, let's take a quick look. All right, so first of all, let's go to the daily charts. Again, we have issued continuation. You see the purple line right here. I think that this is going to be the uh, bottom line here, the 16,300. And I know that yesterday you were trailing like 16,250 or something like that. Okay, so now you can raise your stop to about 300 in NASDAQ, currently 220. Okay, got it. Yeah, 220. See, I remember. Uh, and YM, let's take a look at YM here on the daily. All right, wow, huge expansion higher. Like I said, the Dow, let me just put different levels here. Uh, from the weekly, we just snapped. So what we what the price did, uh, it actually did it today. It passed over 36,000. Uh, it passed this week, sorry. Uh, it passed over 36,000 and we had a target that it fulfilled today into the 36,100. So the next extension is really high up there into the 36,800. So that is the next target for, uh, for the Dow. Beautiful, beautiful move, beautiful move. And Russell, let's take a quick look at Russell here. Um, daily, oops. Let's go to the daily here. Uh, and I also want to put some extensions on. Okay. Let's go to the weekly first. All right, here we go. Because we want to go to the high. All right, so it's right at target. Okay, it's right at target right here into, um, what's the exact, uh, 43. So it made a 47. So it just triggered slightly above the 127. The next target is gonna be 2540, 2540. Wow, 2540, that's a huge, huge target. And as far as the trail, uh, you could use minor support, 2375, 2375. Uh, Anna, it, it depends on when the trades are setting up. So a lot of times trades are not setting up right in the morning. It depends on the market environment, but sometimes they do. So sometimes I come on the mic very close to 930 because I like to watch the price action. And uh, then I do the pre-market game plan, you know, swift pre-market game plan. And then we get right into trading and then we continue with the chart analysis after. But, you know, typically I like to focus on the first uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes of the day. And then we have another prime time trigger time, which is coming in at 1030. So we may get another trade in there. Okay. Um, but it, it, it truly depends on the market environment. It's not something that I dictate. Of course, I would like every day to have trades at 930 and be done at 945, but th that may not be the case every single day. So some days we're here until 12. Okay, so we're waiting. And some some days we have trades that we stay here until 11 of, or one o'clock or we take it. We have a private feed where uh, we uh, I monitor the trade because the afternoon trading session is a lot slower than the morning session. So there's no use sitting here. We place alerts and I help with the trailing on our private feed. So you're never going to be left alone. No, the no ranged. So everything that you see here, the levels, um, you have to go through the whole entire course to understand how to build these levels. They're really easy to trace. It takes you probably two minutes per chart to trace them. I have tried to automate them, but there was not one system that I can automate them with. Okay, so uh, yeah, because they take a lot of factors. They take the open into consideration. Uh, they take uh, they take uh, a confluence levels. They take multi time frames support resistance. They take trigger points from higher time frames. 
including smaller time frames. So uh, they're not hard to develop. They're not hard to trace. Like I said, it takes you probably less than two minutes, uh, in, uh, two minutes to trace these levels, but we teach them in the course on how to do them. But again, we teach them uh, actually in the last day. And the reason for that is because you have to know patterns. You have to know candlesticks. You have to know price action. You have to know technical analysis. You have to know uh, strategies. And then once you know everything, then you can trace them. So that's why I would love to teach everybody how to trace these levels right now. But you need to know a lot, a lot, about, uh, a lot about the structure. Oh my gosh, exactly, Laura. You never short oil on a Friday. Oh my God, really? It's moving higher because I, I didn't look. Yep, see, I told you. So it, if it goes over $80.20, it's going to go to $80.35. You have the levels right here. Uh, the next target is uh, 70 and then it has void to $81.25. Awesome if you took it. Awesome if you took it. All right, guys, I'm pretty much done for the day. Um, my, we had a really great week uh, in the sense that we, uh, we had constant wins to, uh, this week. Uh, it was cool. It was cool. It was a really cool week. Uh, yeah, Alonso, uh, shoot me an email. Yeah, Jeremy. Oh, we're really good friends. Really good friends. <laughs> oh, Dell. <laughs> All right. Awesome. <laughs> okay, here's my email ad address. It's info at tradeoutloud.com. I hope, I hope I spelled it right. Yeah, sideways price action and the Dow. Just want to do a quick review right now of the market action. All right, definitely basing into the high. So this is super strong uh, with oil continuing higher and with a little bit of strength in financials sideways, but holding in financials, we could see uh, we could see the market higher in the uh, in the afternoon. Definitely, you want to see the price trade over at least 355 to 356 in order to continue to 75 and 400 in the Dow if you're looking for another trade idea. Uh, definitely a lot of consolidation. So we see 945 till now, really strong range bound, range market, not pulling back. So definitely if the price is going to trade over 47.10 or 10.50 or even 11, it's going to go to a target of 15 to 17. Also nice, uh, uh, I would say nice uh, five minute rather than 15 minute. You could see how uh, this uh, this uh, resistance area, the green dotted line here is holding the price in check. If the price is going to start trading above 440, this is going to start going higher, much higher, much, much higher. OK, and here's Russell again, Russell consolidation, 15 minute as well, rising into the high. It actually had a five minute rotation. And there's somebody here in the room, one of my members that uh, uh, that uh, mentioned that uh, Ranjit, I think it was you, you mentioned that uh, you are long in Russell. Uh, at 37, I believe you said, you posted it in here. This is going to be the next breakout. So look for targets. By the way, there's uh, some resistance. Let me sh let me um, go to my other charts, New York trading session charts. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this di digesting this pivot right here. So the next target is going to be 2450. And then it's going to go uh, 2470. It has a tradable void. So from that point on, from uh, 2450, the next resistance is 2470. 
And then from, um, from 50 to 70, <clears throat> no other targets. So therefore, no other uh, pressure points. So therefore, all you, all you do now, all you do is you trail from that point on. Uh, never trade short. You're still in RTY. Wow. Okay. So you're on team Lori and Laura right now and Paul with RTY. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. All right. Let me know if there are any other questions. I'm done for the day. We're 15 minutes into the London session close and I will see you guys next week. Let's chill, relax and enjoy the weekend. And uh, let's focus on next week's price action activity. Oh my gosh, I didn't read it. I'm sorry about that. I, I probably missed the, missed the post because I usually call it. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. I will see you guys back here on Monday. Hope you enjoyed this session. Hope it was useful. And uh, always focus on your trades. Thanks so much, guys. See you on Monday. Enjoy the weekend. Bye.